All right, welcome to another UMLO Extras. In this one, we're going to be talking about approaching design. And whether you're using Sparks Enterprise Architect or you're using some other modeling tool, many of us approach design from different perspectives, the top down or the bottom up. Top down would be from understanding the requirements of the business, methods and procedures, the as is or current mode of operations, as the client stakeholders are directing you to the to be or future mode of operations. And in between, requirements could change, systems could change, software could change, or it may remain the same. This is what you're trying to accomplish when you're approaching design. In our business process modeling series, we introduce this choreography diagram. These are usually very good for starting design. Just remember that design is the how the what is done, where the what are the requirements, and solution is who's doing the what. So when you're getting into, and you usually are starting with a solution architect before you start bringing in application architects, engineers, software and system engineers, you have to understand how you're going to solve the problem. So this is a good way to start that. And then essentially what we do is we eventually move to either component diagrams or we move to block diagrams. So typically you'll see a lot of architects just start with simple boxes and lines and start putting down who's going to do the what. These could be just generic names or references that are in each one of the boxes, or they could be actual systems. So as we're moving through different ways to approach design, there's really no difference between this class diagram or what we refer to as a block diagram as we're moving into maybe understanding the deployment views uh, within what systems, where you're going, where they're located, all of that stuff, and then maybe into component diagrams such as this. There's really no difference between this component diagram and this deployment diagram or even this block diagram. So often engineers in particular, but more advanced architects that understand unified modeling language in UML will start with a component diagram because they want to understand the components of the system, the components of the company, whether these are software systems or what have you, uh, they could be tables and chairs in a retail store, but they're the components of the system that needs to be solved and eventually designed. In our sessions, another model that I've shared quite a bit over the past year during demonstrations is dealing around a fictitious e-commerce platform for our co. In this block diagram here, there is no difference between this cleared class diagram or block diagram and this class diagram. The only difference is, is that we've exposed the internal elements and attributes of each one of the class elements. In this case, we've got attributes, we have operations, we have receptions or other things that are going on in or between the elements that are involved. We have roles and responsibilities. They're here, they're tagged under requirements. So there's no difference between this block diagram and this diagram other than attempting to further define, especially for technical stakeholders, what's going on within the system, the software, the design. And there's no difference between this model and the, this custom diagram that may be used to represent uh, the architecture to non-technical stakeholders in PowerPoint presentations and other non-technical documentation. These are the exact same elements, internet, internet, internet. They're the exact same components. They have the same global unique IDs. As we, previous session, we spoke about inspector so that when you're looking at an element, you understand the relations, the requirements, as you're inspecting the intelligence under each one of these elements. So you can see 
the, you're able to inspect the data based on the global unique ID as you're building design. So you're able to start with very simple block diagrams, or if you wish, you can go out to component diagrams. You can go out even to choreography models, which is one of my favorite approaches, understanding stakeholders, participants, systems, and software. So which approach is best when you're starting design? Whether you're using or you're working with uh, non-technical stakeholders and or technical stakeholders. Typically what we'll see is solution architects, analysts that are working between the two stakeholder groups will start with a block diagram. It's the simplest way to approach anything that you're doing. Others, as you're trying to understand the system, you may be building out in cloud or some brick and mortar or you're building out in a a local server environment to a central office. We'll start with a deployment view because from when you're working with a deployment view, you're able to look at the execution environments and then eventually drill down to the components within a node or an execution environment. Another way is just starting with a component diagram. So these components that you're seeing here were derived during this deployment exercise as they were building out the components and how they're going to work together. So when was best to use a component diagram? Well, the answer to that is when you're trying to understand, well, how do these components work together? How do they interface? So you're able to do lollipops, or if you want to say ball and socket uh, views to show, hey, this component for add is connected to this component, which is the web server, which is needs to understand ads that need to be presented in the presentation layer or recommendations for what ads should be tailored for a particular region or user or customer. And then there's, well, how do we assemble the connection between ads, recommendations, and uh, product catalog? Well, this is a much easier way to help understand how things are connected. So component diagrams are a good way to approach. Just when you're approaching design, just know that in Sparks Enterprise Architect versus other tools, you have the ability to further define an element all the way down to scenarios. You're able to simulate the architecture at any level, how requirements, rules, policies are going to be exercised using component diagrams in cahoots with chore choreography diagrams or other BPMN diagrams gives you the ability to drill down into potential interfaces. So in this case, in this component diagram, we have a component called cart. And during design, you're able to actually bring in real code to help assist in the design when you're looking at changes between current mode of operations and future mode of operations. And you're able to, to carry forth this intelligence, you know, to things like test cases, you can bring in interfaces as you're doing testing within your application or your architecture, most importantly, your design approaches. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Leave comments down below, good or bad. Ask questions, we'll try to get to them. In this session, we, were, we just touched on how to approach design. The most important thing to understand is that you want to get to design as soon as possible. Don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Don't get stuck in, do we have all the requirements? Start early as I've talked about in this channel. Test, validate, and then start building out views of where you are today and where you need to go tomorrow. And then you can use modeling to help you assess and move there as fast as possible. So until the next time that we meet, happy modeling.